to go check it out. Who was the deceased? He said, it's probably somebody important. Probably somebody famous because there's an unusual amount of people that came to this funeral and because he lived close to that funeral home, he always see families coming on a weekly basis for funerals and he saw there was an unusual amount of people to that, to that specific or that particular funeral. And he said, I want to check this out because it may be somebody famous. I want to know who it is. And when he got there for his surprise, it wasn't somebody famous like he thought it was, but it was a young man and he decided to go and see the family and see what was going on. And when he saw that young man, he was touched. He said, wow, that's a young man that is so full of life, so full of dreams, a whole life ahead of him, a lot of, a lot of dreams to, 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 to live and, and, and things to conquer. And he was touched by that. So he decided to ask somebody, this is so sad, what did he die of? Because he wanted to know. And then somebody told him, oh, he died like a fish. He died like a fish? Then John asked, he died like a fish, what does that mean? The person answered, he talked too much. He talked too much and his mouth gave him away. And just like a fish die, dies by its mouth, he also died because of his mouth. He was like, wow. He decided not to ask any more questions. But he was shocked by the answer. And I want to give you today the title of my message. The title of my message is, Died Like a Fish. Died Like a Fish. I want you to watch this. A studies show that the average person says 11 million words per year. Average person speaks 11 million words per year. In fact, my wife was trying to flatter me and she said, honey, you can do that in a month. <laughs> but that's not a compliment. An average person speaks 11 million words per year. And if you live until you're 65 and average the 11 million words per year, that will be just about three quarter of a billion words you speak in lifetime. I'm talking to an accountant right now. He's good with numbers. If you live up to 65, uh, you're 65 years old and you average the 11, mil the 11 million words per year, that will be just about three quarter of a billion words that you will speak in lifetime. I believe you can all agree that that's a lot of words. Yeah. You with me? Yeah, man. I believe is speaking is what we do the most in life. Yeah. I personally believe that. Because you don't just speak to others, you speak to yourself as well. Right? Yeah. We talk to ourselves. So I believe speaking is what we do the most in life. No wonder the Bible talks so much, so much about the importance of your words. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. And the Bible says in Proverbs 18, verse 21, we have this classic proverb of Solomon in Proverbs 18. That every time we're going to speak about words, we're going to talk about words, most of the people, they, they, they read or they quote the scripture because it's so powerful. And a lot of times we take for granted, for granted the power that it's in this word. 
In Proverbs and, and in Proverbs 18, verse 21, Solomon says this: the tongue can bring death or life. And those who love to talk, I like this translation. The NLT says this, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Do you know anybody like that that loves to talk? Don't look at your spouse right now. <laughs> we all know people that love to talk. They just got to speak their mind. Right? I said that uh, a few weeks ago. That if you're, if you're the person that always, you know, I, I just got to speak my mind, Pastor. I just got to say, you know, what it is. I, I'm, you know I'm, I'm very real. I'm very real. You're not a real person. You're a child. Because a child speaks their mind and the adult stops to think. Are you with me? Yeah, I, you know, a, 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 little, a little child will look at a very ugly person and say, you're so ugly. An adult will think the same thing but not say it. Hello? Right? I'm sorry, bro. Right? Isn't that true? Sometimes they say, oh my God. But, you know, but the, 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 you know, the little children, they don't care. They just speak their mind. And sometimes us as parents have to say, hey, don't say that. Please apologize. Yeah. But, that, but you agree with the kid. You just don't like that they said. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> so the person that loves to talk, We'll reap the consequences. I don't know about you, but I already have lived some consequences of my words. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that you already got yourself in trouble by speaking a little bit too much. Amen. Hello? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm pretty sure all of us here, one day or the other, our, our mouth gave us away. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. I believe I'm speaking at the right place this morning. So, the Bible says that the tongue can bring death or life, and those who love to talk will reap the consequences. And also, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 12, in the New King James Version, says this, verse 33. Either make the tree, the tree good, and its fruit is good. Either make the tree good, and, it, and its fruit is good. Or else, make the tree bad, and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. In other words, Jesus was talking about words. Your words are your fruits. Your words will show what's in your heart. Your words will show in what you believe in. Are you with me? Yeah. For a tree is known by its fruit or the words. Brood of vipers. How can you being evil is speak good things? Jesus said. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth... Speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Verse 36. But I say to you that for every idle word may men may speak, they will give account, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. Every word you speak. Sometimes they say, oh, I just got to say what I have to say. I just got to talk. Let me tell you something. You have to give an account. Of those words one day. For by your words. You will be justified. And by your words. You will be condemned. Wow. It's powerful. I like what the message translation says here. It says this. It's your heart. Not the dictionary. That gives meaning to your words. It's your heart. Not the dictionary. That gives meaning to your words. Your words are formed by what's in your heart. Amen. My God. Every one of these careless, careless words is going to come back to haunt you. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. Words can be your salvation. Words can also be your damnation. My God. You don't even need to have revelation for this. It's clear. You just got to rewrite. Remember this, this kid song that used to be saying before? I don't even know if it still does, but it used to say this. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. 
Remember that? Yeah. That's a lie from the devil. Yeah. <laughs> Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is a lie. Can I tell you why? Yeah. Because the reality is that we can be healed by breaking, by, by broken bones. Right. We can be healed by things that happen in our, in our flesh body and in, in our body and our flesh. And but there's a lot of people that still have open wounds in their hearts, in their soul, in their spirit, of, because of words that were spoken to them from women when they were a child. Yeah. Yes. Amen. 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 You can heal from a broken bone in six months, in like six weeks, in four weeks maybe. Mm -hmm. But there's people that are fighting against words that were spoken to them that ripped their heart apart. When they're a child, they stand, and those words are still hunting them. They cannot overcome in life. They cannot uh, uh, mount anything. They cannot. They cannot be successful. They cannot have joy because every time things get a little better, they remember those words that say, "You will never be anything." Right. That's right. Yeah. Who do you think you are? Nobody will ever like you. Right. You're a troublemaker. I wish you were never born. You're so fat. You're so ugly. You're so this. You talk too much. Look at you. Nobody likes you. I regret the day I married you. I regret the day you were born. I could be doing so many more things if it wasn't for you. And people think that they can just speak those things and it will just go away. It's better to be slapped on the face and hear things like that. Come on, somebody, talk to me. Amen. Stick and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It will. Yes, it will. And there's a lot of people hurting today because of words. I had a mother talk to me a, a little while ago. She called me and she said, Pastor, please talk to my son, a nine year old boy. Please talk to my son because he told his little friend that he hates life. He doesn't have the, the, the joy to live. He doesn't like a nine-year-old boy saying things like this. So I said, why? Well, she said, well, when I get mad, I don't I said, what, what's going on in your house? Well, when I get mad, sometimes I tell him words. Sometimes I tell him she's a single mother. Sometimes I tell him, if it wasn't for you, we would have more money. Yeah, I feel like sent you back to live with your father. I wish you were never here. I say things like this, Pastor, when I'm angry. When I'm, and I said, and you expect your son to have joy? I said to her, let me, do, let me tell you something. I don't need to talk to your son. I need to talk to you. You're the problem. Amen. I said, I want you to hang up the phone with me. And I'm telling you, the same tone of voice that I have right now is the one that I have with her on the phone. I said, let me tell you something. You hang up this phone and you get your son and you sit with him and you apologize to him. Your son doesn't want to live, not because things are difficult, it's because of you. Yes. Because he feels like if I'm not here, then maybe my mother can be happy. Yes. Maybe my mother can have, can have everything she wants. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a happy weight for her. I'm the cross that she has to carry. Imagine a nine-year-old boy hearing things like this from his mother. And, 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 and people think that these things are normal, that we can just vent out and speak whatever we want, and there's no consequences. I said, you get yourself in the and promise me something that you will never talk like this to your son again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Your son is not a problem. He's dealing with it. He's dealing right now. He's going through what he's going through right now because of your words. Amen. Amen. And imagine, these were the things that she had the guts to tell me. Imagine the things that she wouldn't have the guts to tell me. Right. Right. That's why we got to be careful with the words that comes out of our mouth. Amen. People are getting in trouble because of their words. That's why I said uh, uh, the, the title of this message is like, died like a fish. Why died like a fish? Because a fish died by its mouth. Wow. Wow. And we have a lot of Christians today dying because of their big mouth. Yeah. 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 On the outside, it looks like everything is normal, but they're dead on the inside. Because we don't watch the words that comes out of our mouth. I tell people all the time, you want to you wanna see how your life is going to be five years from now? Listen to your words now. Because the words, 
you speak now are the platforms that you can step on it tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. And sometimes we take for granted when we see pastors speaking about confessing the word of God. Confessing the word of God. Can I tell you something? In order for you to be saved, you have to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Why now that you're already in the kingdom, you're going to stop confessing? Right, right. Amen. Come on, somebody. Talk to me a little bit. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. It's not by doing good. It's about confessing Jesus as your Lord and Savior yeah. to be saved. And now that you're in the kingdom, you're going to stop confessing the word of God. If everything that God created was by speaking. Mm -hmm. Amen. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. We need to speak the word of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because the word of God in your mouth is the most powerful weapon that you have. Amen. Amen. And the devil, of course, wants you to think that it's that it's a, this is a, 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 a Christian cliche, this is a, a, a Christian formula that, that doesn't really work. It's not Christian formula. This is principles of the word of God. I told you a few weeks ago how God told Joshua, keep the word in your mouth if yeah. you want to be successful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Remember that? Mm -hmm. The word. And the devil wants you to think that because if you don't use your weapons, you're nothing. Easy to pray. Oh, Pastor, you look like you're mad. I'm mad at the devil, dude. Yeah. I'm mad at the devil, and I'm mad at you. I want to encourage you. I want to shake you today yeah. so you can get this word and yeah. start speaking the word of God and watch everything else that comes out of your mouth right. because your words are determining your life. Everything that comes out of your heart, everything that comes out of your mouth yeah. is shaping your life. And God wants you to be victorious every day. Amen. Amen. And if we do a few little changes, starting by what's in our hearts, starting by what comes out of our mouth, we can fix a lot of things in our lives. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 So don't you ever speak ne mean negative words to your children, to your spouse, to your friends. There's a lot of people destroying relationships. Destroying, re destroying relationships because of words. Amen. Friendship. Yeah. Marriage. Whatever you can think of. And those words that you speak are hunting those people. And they're going to hunt you back. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. So we have to watch our words over our kids. We have to watch our words over our spouses, over ourselves, over our finances. Over our health, over our dreams, over our church. We have to watch. We have to be careful with what we just speak. Sometimes we want to just open our mouth and say whatever you want. Let me tell you something. When you just say whatever you want, you're going to get whatever you said. Right. Amen. And a lot of people we speak whatever they want, but they don't want whatever they said. It doesn't work like that. I said a few weeks ago, you can choose your seed, but you cannot choose your harvest. You can choose your seed, not your harvest. You cannot just throw any seed and say, no, now I want this. No, 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 you're going to get exactly mm -hmm. what you have sown. Thank you, Lord. And those who love to talk will eat its fruit, will reap the consequences. We see parents saying to kids like this, you will never be anything, you're lazy. And they expect them to be successful later. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yeah, we have spouses talking to, to each other. You, would, you, you just never change. And they expect them to change. Mm -hmm. And they pray, well, God, please, you know, I'm standing in a, in a word for my marriage. But every time something goes different than you were, you were praying for, you say, you just never change exactly. That's why it's still the same. Because that's what you're confessing every day. Yeah. It just never change. Yeah. You speak over, you know, of yourself. I hate myself. I hate the way I look. No wonder you're still single. <laughs> if you don't like yourself and you expect others to love you, yeah. come on somebody, talk Amen. to me. Amen. Even if you're married, you hate yourself, but you expect to hear compliments from your husband. Right. Amen. Come on somebody, talk to me a little bit. Yeah. you got to change the words we speak about ourselves. I, our finances, I never have any money left. I never get any break. Exactly. That's why you're always right here. Because you're constantly confessing that you never have any money left. Right. Amen. Amen. 
And people say, my faith doesn't work. It does. It's working. It's working. I will never be healed like other people. I don't even waste my time going to the front when the pastor calls because I just never get my healing. That's it. Enjoy your disease. <laughs> we speak against our dreams. We speak against our dreams. I dream too much. I'm just a daydreamer. Exactly. So we never expect it to come to pass. We even speak over our church. I just don't understand why we got to keep coming to the hood now. <laughs> <laughs> just have a building like every other church. Because we're not every other church. That's right. 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 Absolutely not. So let me tell you something. Don't speak your feelings. You speak what you want to see and feel. Yeah. Yeah. Very easy to speak your feelings. You don't need faith for that. Wow. That's good. Don't speak what you're feeling. Speak what you want to see. Amen. And then you will feel good. Are you with me? Amen. Watch this. I'm just giving you my introduction. That's why I'm going slow. Watch this. I'm going to give you something to think. To think about. Every time you're going to speak, I want you to stop and think. Watch. Stop and think. The word think. T H I N K. I want you to think about these five letters. T H I N K. T, before you speak, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? Mm. K. Is it kind? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can speak the truth, but if you're not speaking with a good benefit, mm -hmm. out of the goodness of your heart, if it's not being kind, if it's not of, out of love, you're wasting your time. Because you can speak the truth if it's the wrong time, it's not going to be received. Right. Right. Timing is everything. Yeah. Wow. Time is everything. Is it true? Is it helpful? Is it inspiring? Is it necessary? Is it kind? So every time you're going to speak, think. Think. Say this with me. I have to watch my heart. And consequently, my words. Because my heart can give my mouth away. And my life depends on it. Your heart can give your mouth away. Because out of the abundance of the heart, I, have, I see Christians praying, God help me. Uh, no, God guard my heart. No, it's your job to guard your heart. That's yeah. right. You can ask him for help. Holy Spirit, help me to do what I cannot do in the natural. Help me to speak the word. How to keep my heart pure. Help me. But don't ask him to do something that it's your responsibility to do. Because whatever you allow in your heart, it's, it eventually is going to come out of your mouth. So that's why I said, I have to watch my heart and consequently my word. Because my heart can keep my mouth away. And my life depends on it. My life depends on it, yes. I just told you a few minutes ago that you got saved because of your mouth. Right. Mm -hmm. You got saved because of your mouth. So your, your mouth depends on it. Your life depends on it. Wow. Your life depends on it. If you confess, if you confess, you don't confess anything by writing. You confess by speaking. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Yes. Now, let me get into my message. It's not going to be very long. Let me get into my message.
Can I show you how your words can destroy you if you don't watch over it? Yes. Let's go to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. I'm going to read from the NIV version. I want you to keep your Bibles open because we're going to navigate through chapter 13 and chapter 14. Numbers chapter 13 from the NIV version I'm going to be reading. Verse 1 says this. If you're there, say amen. Amen. The Lord said to Moses, send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to, to the Israelites. Another translation said that I have the, the, the land I have already given to the Israelites. I want you to get this. God told them, go check it out, what I already prepared for you. I already gave you. It's yours. They didn't take possession yet. They're not living there yet, but God said, go check it out, the land that I already gave you. Right? Are you with me? Send some men to explore the land of Canaan, which I'm giving to the Israelites. The Israelites. From each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. Verse 17. Let's go down verse 17. When Moses sent them to explore Canaan, he said, go up. I want you to get this. Through Negev and into the hill country. Verse 18. See what the land is like. <coughs> See what the land is like. I want you to highlight that. See what the land is like. And whether the people who live there are strong or weak. Few or many. What kind of land do they live in? Is it good or bad? What kind of towns do they live in? Are they... Unwell or fortified? Unwalled or fortified? How is the soil? Is it, fer is it, is it, is it fertile or poor? Mm -hmm. Or the trees? Are there trees there or not? Do your best to bring some of the fruit of the land. Verse 23. When they reached to the valley of Eshcol, they cut off a branch bearing a single cluster of grapes. Two of them carried it on a pole between them, along with some, some pomegranates and figs. That's how big the, the grapes are. And two men needed to carry it. We never seen anything like this. Can you imagine? Grapes, two men needed to carry it. Wow. Crazy. Crazy. Verse 26. They came back to Moses. Now I want you to get this. Now they're going to, they came back, and they're going to give the report of the land. What did, what did I just tell you in verse 18? He said, I want you to go there and see what it's like. Right? So if I tell you to go see something and bring me the report, all I want from you is the report. Is it true? Well, you know. God told us to check it out. So everything that I asked you to look at, did you check? That's it. I just want the report. Don't tell me anything else. Don't add your two cents to it. Are you with me? When you, did you ever talk to somebody that you ask them for something they try to elaborate before they give you the answer? Just give me the answer. Right? right? It's annoying. It so he, is, he just want to get to the fact. And somebody, you know, but, you know, but uh, uh, no, I just want the answer. <laughs> That's it. So they come back and now they have to give the report to their leader. Verse 20, 26. They came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community. So everybody, the whole Israelite community is waiting for the report. Because everybody knew that all the leaders from the 12 tribes went to check the sea. They went to check the land. So the whole community, not just the leaders, everybody's waiting for the report. They come back to Moses and Aaron, the whole Israelite community, and Kadesh in the desert of Paran. There they reported to them and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land. They showed them, look at these huge grapes. That's what it's there. So they show them. They gave Moses this account. Watch this. We went into the land to which you sent us. 
And it does flow. And, and it does flow with milk and honey. So he said, everything you said and everything that God told us is true. Everything. It does flow with milk and honey. Here it's fruit. But that's the problem right there. When they add their butt into it. But I don't want to hear your butt. I don't want to hear that. I ask you for the report. I'm not asking your opinion. But the people who live there are powerful. And the cities are fortified and very large. We even saw the descendants of Anak there. The, Am the, Am the Amalekites live in the Gath. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites live in the hill country. And the Canaanites live near the sea along the Jordan. I want you to listen to me. Don't but God when God gives you a promise. Amen. Amen. Don't but God when God gives you a promise. Moses told them, bring me the report. Do not give me your opinion. Don't tell me what you think. Just tell me if it's true or not. And they came back and they gave the report. It is true. It does flow with milk and honey. Here's the fruit to prove that everything God said and you said is true. But I don't care about your butt. I know it sounds funny, but I want you to get the spiritual thing here. I don't care about your opinion because my opinion and your opinion on God's promise have nothing to work with. Has nothing to do with My opinion doesn't matter when God gives a word. Amen. I wish I was preaching somewhere else this morning. Watch your words. Can we edit that part of the video? Verse 32, 
And they spread. Watch this. This is very dangerous right now. And they spread among the Israelites a bad report about the land they had explored. And they said, the land we explore, we explore devours those who live in it. They spread a bad report. The land we explore devours people who live in. Who said that? Where did they, they get where did they get that from? Yeah. That the land or the people that were there are cannibals. They eat people. It's not in the word. Who said that? You see? Fear and lack of faith makes you create things that don't even exist. They didn't see that there. They didn't see anybody eating anybody. Who cares that they're big? Who cares if God gave you a promise? Amen. Who cares that they're stronger if God gives you a promise? Amen. Who cares if they have more money if God gave you a promise? Fear and lack of faith can make you create things that don't even exist. Are you with me? Amen. Let me tell you something. I want you to get this. One thing is when you decide not to believe God for yourself. But when you decide to become a bearer of bad news to others, you're in trouble. Amen. I'm going to say that again. One thing is if you want to be a doubter of yourself. But when you become now a bearer of bad news... And you're trying to speak other people out of the blessing and out of the promise. Watch. Yeah. Because we have these kind of people in churches. Yeah. They say amen. They say glory to God. They, they said, wow, that's a powerful word. But then when they get on a one-on-one -on -one with other people, they try to say, it's not really like that. Yeah. Are you still believing for that kind of stuff? Do you really believe that can possibly happen? That's not true. Yeah. Be careful. Don't let yourself get involved. And people like that, they become bearers of bad news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Can I tell you something? Yeah. Ten people were able to contaminate three million people. Because the only two that got into the land, Caleb and Joshua, the only two that saw exactly what God wanted them to see. And they didn't put their butt in the middle. You see how you, when you surround yourself by negative people, they can influence you and take you out of the blessing. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why you need to surround yourself with faith people. Yeah. That's why you need to surround yourself with people that speak into your life. Do not take, try to take the promise away from you. Amen. That encourage you. If you believe it, I'm believing with you. Amen. If God gave you a promise, we're going to celebrate. Amen. That's why I don't. Not everybody sits with me to have a meal. Not everybody has my comes to my house. Why? Because I don't need negative people coming to my house and check what I have, what I don't have, what kind of car I drive, what I don't drive. Not here. Not here. That's why I surround myself with fake people. I don't need anybody telling me, Pastor, but the church is only a little bit over here and you're talking about buying a building? Get behind me, Satan. I don't need that kind of people near me because I already have the devil say to me every day that it's crazy, that it's not going to happen. I need people that will say, it will happen. God is going to do it. We're going to believe for it. God is not giving us a promise. We're going to reach the community. We're going to reach the world. There's nothing we can stop. Who can? Who cares if other people have more money? I'm not them. God called me. He will provide. He will make it happen. And we will go to the promised land that He has promised us. Come on, somebody. You surround yourself with faith people. Because today is 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 socially acceptable to be negative. Nobody cares if you're negative, but if you're, you're a positive person, if you're a fake person, people don't want to be around you. Because it's okay to complain about the weather. It's okay to complain when it's hot. It's okay to complain when it's too cold. It's okay to complain. We complain. It's okay to complain that it's allergy season. But when you say, I don't care if it's allergy season, it's not going to get on me because I have the favor of the Lord in my heart. Oh, really? Really? Are you better than anybody else? No, I'm not better than anybody else, but I may have more knowledge than a lot of people. Come on, buddy. 
no, no. That's why you don't see a lot of people grabbing the microphone in this church because I'm building a foundation here that it's a solid foundation in the Word of God and in our faith in God that has brought us all the way over here because of our parents, because of our fathers, because of our pastors, and we're not going to change this now. I'm not going to put up a show to make people happy and jump and Monday have the same trouble, the same life, the same habits, the same, the same addiction, and not have their lives transformed. I'm here to preach the word of God that will take you from one level to another level, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from faith to faith, because the only thing that changes people's lives is the word of God and nothing else. It's not the lights, it's not the smoke, it's not good music, it's Jesus himself in the world. Preach the word, stand in the word, speak the word, and you will see what God will do in your life. Yeah. The word hasn't changed. Right. People have changed. Yes. The culture has changed. Yes. But we're not going to change. No. I'm not changing. The word of God. And I can speak because I'm, I'm part of the young generation. Yeah. I'm not an old preacher. Yeah. <laughs> jealous of other people. I'm not jealous of anybody. I know, I know who I am. I know I have an accent. I know I wasn't born here. I know all that. Who cares? God called me here. Maybe to preach better than some Americans because they cannot preach faith. America sent so many people to the whole world as missionaries that God is bringing people back to evangelize America. You have to deal with me now. You don't like it? You complain to him. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. Verse 33. We saw the Nephilim. They are the descendants of Anak. They come from Nephilim. From the Nephilim. We seen, watch this, like grasshoppers in our own eyes. And we look, we look to them as the same. I want to tell you, I want to tell you, I want to, I want to tell you this. The way you see yourself is how people will see yourself. Mm -hmm. Amen. The way you look at yourself is how others are going to look at yourself. Praise God. That's how people are going to look at you. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to change the way you see yourself. Because the way you see yourself, that's how people will see you. The way you speak about yourself, that's how people are going to speak about you. And sometimes you don't like to hear some things you hear. But that's, those are the same words that you speak about yourself. Just coming from a different vessel. We seemed like grasshoppers. That's how they saw themselves. Wow. Mm. How come Joshua and Caleb didn't say that? Wow. Mm. Different perspectives. Yeah. Mm. Focusing the word of God in other circumstances. And let me tell you something. These 12 spies, they were all leaders. Come on. Not random people. Come These on. are leaders. Of tribes. Instead of being the ones encouraging everybody, they're speaking doubt, yes. speak negativity, fear among the people. And you see how fear can spread a lot faster than faith? My God. Amen. I gotta close this. Chapter 14. Chapter 14. I want you to get this. Thank you. Verse 1. That night, all the members of the community raised their voice and wept out loud. Look, everybody's crying. Everybody's crying out. Everybody's full of fear. Everybody's afraid. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron. And the whole assembly said to them, If only we had died in Egypt. My God. Or in this wilderness. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land? Only to let us fall by the sword. I want you to get this. I'm not going to go all the way because of lack of time. But if you go to the last verse of this chapter. They died exactly how they said it here. They fall. They fell on the enemy's sword. My God. Our wives and children 
will be taken as plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to be back to Egypt? They want to go back to be slaves. You see what fear is doing to them? They want to go back to Egypt and submit again to, submit again to slavery. Isn't it better? Watch what they say. And they said to each other, we should choose another leader and go back to Egypt. My gosh. Look what a few words are doing to these people. Look what the bad report can cause on people. Die by sword? Go back to Egypt? Come back and become slaves again? Let's find another leader, they said. We don't need this faith thing from Moses. I want you to hear me. Let's find another leader. We don't need this faith thing. We don't need these promises. We don't need this faith thing that Moses is saying. We don't need this thing. Let's go back. Let's find somebody else because we don't like you. We don't like you. Listen to me. Listen to me and write this down. And don't you ever forget this. Don't you ignore and reject the one God has, has raised, to, raised to bring you to your promised land. Amen. Amen. Don't you ever ignore and reject the one God has put in your life to bring you to the next level. To bring you to your promised land. Yes. Yeah. This is what they're doing. Who cares about this leader? We don't need him. And that's the man that God used to, to, to stand before Pharaoh and say, let God's people go. Amen. That's the man that was fighting for them. Now they say, we don't need you anymore. Let's go back and become yeah. slaves again. My God, my God. I want you to get this. Yeah. Yeah. I want you to get this. Yeah. Verse 5. Then Moses and Aaron fell face down in front of the, the whole Israelite assembly and gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, and, and, and son of Jephunneh, who are among those who explored the land, tore their clothes and said to the whole Israelite assembly, The land we passed through is ex and explored is excellent, exceedingly good. If the Lord please, is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and he will give it to us. Only do not rebel against the Lord, and do not be afraid of the people of the land, because we will devour them. They're not going to devour us. We will devour them. The protection, their protection is gone, but the Lord is with us. Do not be afraid of them. Now watch verse 10. Verse 10. Look, what they, look what they said back to them. Look what they said. But the whole assembly talk about stoning them. We don't need this faith. Let's kill them. Let's kill them. You see what the bad report is doing to these people. They're encouraging them. We will do this. God is with us. No, 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 no. Let's kill them. Stop talking faith over here. We don't need this faith. Uh -uh. My God. Don't you kill your liberator with stones. Words. That's what they're trying to do. Verse 20 now. I want you to get this. Now God got really upset with them. Verse 1, the Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Because if you read there between verse 10 and verse 20, God said to Moses, I'm going to kill everybody. God said, I'm going to kill everybody and I'm going to start a new nation with you. And Moses said, no, God, please don't do this. Please don't do that. What the enemies are going to think of you? That you got them out of here so you can kill them here? Don't do that. You see, even after these people are trying to kill him, they're still praying for them. Right. So God said, okay, the Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Because you asked me, Moses, I forgave you. But now watch this. Nevertheless, as surely as I live, and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who said, who saw my glory, and the signs I performed in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, 
will enter the promised land. I want you to get this. God said, okay, I forgave them. But now one of them got to get into the land. I want you to get this even more. Verse 22, God says to them this. Not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in, in Egypt. These are people that saw God's glory. These are people that saw God's provision. These are people that, God, that saw God open the Red Sea. They still, they still, they still had no, no, no faith in God. God said, these people that saw my glory knows who I am. They're not going to get into the way. And I want you to get this. This, is not, this was not a punishment from God. Because they disobeyed me and they're not going to get into there. This is not a punishment. You know what this is? Consequence of their big mouth. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Verse 23. Not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. This is what God said. Not one of them will ever see the land. I want you to see this. Not one of them will ever see the land I promised. On oath to their ancestors. You see how this is not a punishment? Because God said, not one of them will see what I promised. What I promised. And we just sang here. We just spoke. Somebody quoted and declared. And we all know that God cannot lie. God cannot lie. Are you with me? And God, don't make promises based on your performance either. God never makes a promise based on your performance. God makes a promise based on His Word. And His faithfulness. And His goodness. It's never based on your performance. God makes promises based on His goodness and faithfulness. And the only thing that can cancel God's promise is your mouth. So this is what I want you to see. God said to them, it's not because they, they didn't believe in a good report that they're not going to get into the land. It's because they said they will die in the wilderness so they're going to have exactly what they said because I promised the land. And God doesn't lie. Everything God says will happen, will happen. But my mouth can cancel God's promises. These people died because of their big mouth. Not because God said, you're not going to get into the land. Because he said, I promise. And God never goes back on his promise. Oh my God, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. So when God said, none of them are going to get into the land, was not a punishment. It was just a consequence of their big mouth. So people can die because of their big mouth. They said, we're going to die here. People are going to kill us. We're going to die by short. They're going to take our kids. They're going to take our wives. And God said, that's exactly what's going to happen to them. That's exactly what you're going to get. Watch this. Watch this. Verse 28. So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, you will. I will do to you. The very thing I heard you say. There you go. Wow. Life and death. Amen. Told you. Not punishment. Hallelujah. You will get exactly what you said. There you go. Well, I promise you the land, but you don't want the land. So you will have exactly what you said. That's okay. Amen. You want me to take my protection off? No. You want me to leave you alone? No. So your enemies can get you? That's what you want. I told you, the very thing you said is going to happen. The very thing you said is going to happen, it will happen. That's what the word says. Please stand to your feet. As surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. 
So the question is, what are you saying? What are you speaking about your life? What are the words that are coming out of your mouth? Because it's going to happen to you exactly what you said. But Lord, Lord said, it's not me, it's you. I promised. I already told you what I want. All the promises are in the book. But we just open our big mouth and we say whatever we want, but we don't want whatever we say. Amen. And God said, it's going to happen to you exactly what you said. Just like you said. So what's the, the question for you today is, what are you saying? What are the words that you're speaking over your marriage, your finances, your body, your health, your kids, your church, your friendship, your job, your boss? People speak about their jobs and they hate their bosses, but they expect to get raises. You curse the land every day and you expect the land to give you fruit.
20 years ago. We're going to cancel that right now. We're going to break that negative word that was spoken over you. That even things that you spoke about yourself, your marriage, your relationship, your career, your ministry. We're going to cancel that right now. We're going to declare in Jesus' name that has no power. And from this day on, we're going to speak different. We're going to speak different words and we're going to sow different seeds. Are you with me, church? Put both of your hands up, even if you're seated back there. In Jesus' name, because even if you don't want to get out of your seat, we all, we're all included in this, in this prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray right now, in Jesus' name, every negative word that was ever spoken. In Jesus' name, in their lives and destiny, Father, things that has hold them back. In Jesus' name, I break that spirit. I break that influence right now. And I declare, Father, in Jesus' name, your people are free to live a new future, a new life. Everything that they have spoken, everything that they have dreamed, Father, in Jesus' name, will come to pass. I declare, Father, in Jesus' name, that every single word, Father, in Jesus' name, that will come out of their mouth today will be words of blessing, words of favor, words, Father, of faith. In Jesus' name, I bless every single one of them, Father. And again, Father, we cancel every negative word that was spoken from their mouth and even people that spoke that spoke over them. We break that spirit, Father. We break, we break Father, words that were spoken to them, Father, even when they were a child. In Jesus' name, words that were spoken 10 years ago. Words that were spoken 20 years ago. Words that were spoken 40 years ago. Words that were spoken even this morning. We break that power right now in the name of Jesus. We speak healing over their hearts. Over their soul in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Say with me, in Jesus' name. Say this with me, in Jesus' name. I declare. My mouth is blessed, anointed. My heart is full of the word. And everything I speak is according to the word of God. I don't receive negative words, negative thoughts. I rebuke them. I reject them in Jesus' name. I declare that everything I touch is blessed and will prosper. I declare in Jesus' name, everything I say from this day on will be full of faith and full of the word of God. And I give you, Jesus, all the glory for your word and your revelation in my life today. Help me, Holy Spirit, to do accordingly to what you have said today. In Jesus' name, give God a big praise. Church, we can do a better prayer than that. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You can go back to your seat. Did you get anything today? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This word is so powerful that in the natural Faith comes by here. Faith comes by here. 
Faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Three things. Three things. Let me just say something. Service is pretty much over, but I, I feel like I have to tell you this. Yes. You don't need to see things for your faith to grow. You don't need to see things for your faith to grow. Say it again. Because these people saw the glory of God and their faith didn't grow. That's right. These people saw miracles and their faith didn't grow. What you need to do in order for your faith to grow is three things. Keep hearing the word of God. Yes. Speak the word of God. And make a decision to believe in the word of God. Amen. Amen. To listen to the word of God and believe the word of God only, nothing else. Yes. Don't believe in the word of God first. Believe in the word of God only. Yes. The word of God only. Yes. So the, sometimes people want to see things. You don't need to see things. Because we have many proofs in the Bible that people saw the glory. They, had, they were amazed by what they saw. But they faith, their faith is the same. more people that saw the glory of God and those people that saw everything for 40 years? Let me tell you something. If you see the Red Sea open in front of you, you should never doubt for the rest of your life about anything. Come on. I said, I'm thirsty. There's water. I'm hungry. There's food. I'm hot. There's a cloud. I'm cold. There's a pillar of fire. And you still need more things? Come on. And you see how things, when you see things, that doesn't mean your faith will grow. Because if you're not spending time in the Word, go home. I love you. God bless you. We'll see you next week. If you want to stay and help us break it down, we'll appreciate that. We love you. We'll see you next Sunday. Bring a friend with you. Did you get anything today? Yeah. I love you. In Jesus' name, have a blessed Sunday.